Hey, welcome back to the show. Today, we're going to do a bit of a throwback review. This is something that I think I'm going to be increasingly adding to the mix because as we talk about new works by great creators, sometimes it's really great to go back and take an extended look at some of their old work. So in today's comic book news, we're going to talk about an old work by Frank Miller. One of his most influential books involving Batman and is a collaboration. You might think I'm talking about The Dark Knight Returns, but I'm not. I'm talking about Batman Year One by Frank Miller and David Mazzucchelli today on Comic Book News. Hey, welcome back to the show. I'm Dan Shaheen. Today we're going to talk about comics, right? We're going to talk about Frank Miller and David Mazzucchelli's Batman Year One. And what I'm showing here and what I'm going to show when we uh, get to the Million Dollar Comics Cam is uh, the graphic novel, right? This is a recent edition of the graphic novel that's got some really nice backup features. But if you can, and it's really not that hard, I recommend get, trying to get a hold of the original comics, right? This was featured, this was four issues of the regular Batman series, right? Believe it or not, in today's day and age of like mega miniseries and maxi whatevers, this was just four issues of Batman, but probably four of the most important issues of all time. This book is heavily influential. Now, when most people think about Frank Miller and influential Batman comics, they go straight to Dark Knight Returns. And there's no doubt that was very influential uh, in the comics world and just in the Batman character in general and the wider world of media. But if you underestimate his work here in Batman Year One, you, uh, you're you doing yourself a disservice because the stuff that he did here... Now, if we looked at The Dark Knight Returns as like operatic, right? It had amazing, dramatic, larger-than-life moments in a, a crazy style all its own and uh, uh, full-color, uh, uh, glossy paper and, and like a binding and stuff. Like it was an amazing book on all levels. Miller wanted to take it back, take it back, take it back. If we're going to do... If we did Batman's end his omega so to speak let's do his alpha and let's try and bring him closer to his golden age uh, origins which were like rooted in pulp novels and the, like the pulpy comics of the time when this came out so if you look at these covers right uh and and all four of these covers are are, are fantastic ones that like will pull you in when you see them no often i i've seen these in quarter bins before you know it was so Miller was so hyped that by the time this came out, people were hip to it and ordered tons and tons and tons and tons of them. And it wasn't maybe what everyone was expecting at first, but it definitely went on to take its place as a classic. Look at this cover number three. This is one that I don't remember seeing as much. Isn't as burned in my memory uh, as these other ones, um, but I really love it. Uh, I want to move this over. Um, look at that. At first, I'm like, well, Batman's not even in it, is he? Uh, oh, until you see, oh, who's who's that? Right? Just lurking in the middle. Great composition. Really beautiful work by uh, Mazzucchelli. And, of course, issue number four. This is a classic. This could easily be the cover of the graphic novel. Or, and, and, it, and in my eyes, sums up a lot of what this book is about because it's literally as much about Commissioner Gordon as it is about Batman. Um. But let's talk about the creators for a second, right? Let's talk about uh, the collaboration between Miller and David Mazzucchelli. So Frank Miller uh, um, worked, first worked with uh, Mazzucchelli on Daredevil. They did the uh, Daredevil Born Again, right? Which was, um, you know, s another smash great collaboration by Miller, like with Miller and Mazzucchelli and cemented Miller's place as like a great, one of the greats. In comic book storytelling some said the greatest this comes straight from the uh, introduction by Denny O'Neill to this graphic to uh, the Batman year one graphic novel but who's this David Mazzucchelli guy right like his work was really different really grounded really you know if, if comic books strove to look um, super heroic and, and, and bigger than real life Mazzucchelli's work is grounded and gritty in reality right the look that he gave to Daredevil um, 
was one that Miller thought was the perfect uh, counterpoint to the work that he did in Dark Knight Returns, that Miller himself did with Claus Jansen and Lynn Varley on Dark Knight Returns. So what he did here is tried to bring it back down, grounded street level, and wrote this for Mazzucchelli. Um, so, you know what? I've talked enough. Let's go straight to uh, what else but the million dollars. And here we go. Batman Year One, Frank Miller and David Mazzucchelli. It is a wonderful looking book. If you're looking for other work by David Mazzucchelli, um, he's best known for, you know, he did his own work, uh, Rubber Blanket. He was well known for this. Uh, Asteros Polyp is, is probably his most recent uh, work. And let's get a, we can get a quick peek at it in a million dollar uh, comic scam, right? So uh, this is a really cool hardcover graphic novel. It's more of a character piece, but way different style and type of storytelling than you're going to see in this Batman Year One, but well worth seeking out and looking at because it is beautiful stuff. Mazza Kelly is, mwah, he's an artist, artist, and he has influenced so many that have come after him that you you almost take might take this style for granted, right? This is like the Vertigo or, or you know, if you ever read a, any comic with, by like, with like Greg Rucka in it, who wrote it, like this is the kind of artwork that you're going to see in there. Any book that strives to be grounded kind of in reality but still show really cool, tough action, they're going to the school of David Mazzucchelli. Uh, I, I'm going to get in here so I can get a little closer on the, uh, the old MDCC. And like I said, this is a graphic novel. I really prefer uh, individual issues on the Million Dollar Comics cam and in general for their, because of their ability to lie flat without breaking the spine. But these are the sacrifices I make for my audience. Um, so I'm definitely not going to go through the entire book. I just want to go through uh, some of this stuff and, and talk about some of the Millerisms and tropes that are in here. So Batman, of course, is a super tough guy. And he's just returned to Gotham City, and they and they've actually set some some numbers. So he's 25, and he's been gone for, for for 12 years abroad training as the Batman, and he's returned to Gotham City like, and is the millionaire playboy. Um, uh, Jim Gordon has just uh, been transferred to Gotham City out of Chicago, where he ran into some kind of troubles there, and uh, you know he's kind of Serpico. He's like the last honest cop. Gotham is super crooked. It's like an analog for Chicago in many ways, but Gotham's super crooked, and he quickly runs afoul of his own squad who kind of turn against him. Meanwhile, Batman, or rather Bruce Wayne, who has not thought figured out the whole Batman shtick yet, is uh is going out on his first like patrol. So he disguises himself with like a scar and a little bit of makeup and a sort of veteran's outfit and uh, goes to patrol the seedy streets of Gotham, where he's like immediately picked out by the local pimps as like what are you you know what are you vice that look oh, that veteran stick is played out pretty pretty funny stuff and we get into like batman's first action on the street which goes horribly wrong now a lot of the stuff from this book and a lot of the ideas here were, were heavily influenced uh, uh uh batman begins the movie and we'll see especially towards the end we'll see um that stuff so anyway, things don't go so great. Uh, Batman's getting stabbed in the leg by hookers, and he's beating them up. And who should step in but our but our gal Selina? This is our first look at Catwoman in this universe. And in like many women in Miller's universe, they're often uh, made to be sort of like uh, well, they're prostitutes, they're whores, hookers with the heart of gold. Um, anyway, that's what Catwoman is in this book. Like it or or, or leave it. Um, anyway, Batman goes, it goes horribly wrong, right? And he's, he's shot, he's beat, he's arrested by cops. He has to like smash up a cop car and escape from cops in a pretty cool scene. Um, and barely makes it out of there alive. Meanwhile, Gordon has also just been beat up by cops and they sort of pass each other, which, which is sweet stuff. And this is where we get our first look at Jim Gordon and what a tough guy he is. And he's like. He knows he's got to beat up this one cop who he's been scoping out, this dirty cop who was a Green Beret. So he's a huge, tough guy. But, you know, Gordon is not afraid of Green Berets. And he talks about he hasn't had to beat up a Green Beret for 15 years. Um, anyway, that's the kind of tough, tough guy, hard-boiled tough guy stuff Frank Miller brings to, to, to uh, Jim Gordon. So 
Anyway, we get Batman nursing his wounds, and he's like, I could call for Alfred, but I gotta figure out some way to scare these criminals. They were just not afraid of me. They were not afraid of me. I don't know what to do. I could ring this bell and get Alfred, but I, you know, until I figure this out, I'm just gonna sit here and bleed. And finally, the iconic imagery of the bat smashing through the window, and he sort of flashes back to remembering that bat as a kid, and he's got his, he's got his shtick, he knows what to do, he's gonna be Batman. And that's it, right? One single issue cost 75 cents back in 86 whenever this came out no 88 maybe um wonderful so we've got our batman he's got his stick it only took one issue to get there and it was well worth it the stakes were high we learned a lot about characters james gordon is interesting and in this book we'll see he's not you know he's not squeaky clean he cheats on his wife he's he's morally gray and compromised he basically looks the other way he 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 knows Bruce Wayne is most likely Batman, but man, they Gotham needs so much help because the streets are so dirty. Even his, you know, bosses are dirty. But it's really great. We get to see awesome action by Mazzy Kelly. He draws a fantastic Batman. We get to see like the ideas of why people think he's supernatural. We get we get uh, cops telling stories about the Batman, about how the bullets went right through him, but it really went through his cape, right? Great stuff, grounded in realism. This is, I mean, heavily, as I said before, heavily, heavily introduced, influenced Batman Begins and all the uh, the recent Batman movies that have been so great. Right down to this gimmick, where uh, you know Batman's trapped by cops. He has no way out. All he's got is his blowgun in his boot. He lost his utility belt. It's really sweet looking. Almost Alex Toth type look to this artwork, who I love. Um, but he, he uses a little device in his shoe that calls uh, all the bats from the Bat Cave and sort of mask his escape. You know, a really cool idea. I don't like Batman as a super scientist, but in this, it's not really presented as super science. It's pretty straightforward. He's like, basically, I worked and figured out the frequencies. I worked for a few weeks and figured this out and now I've got this shtick and it was a great dramatic ending here it and it adds to his sort of like supernatural air which is great in here because as grounded as the character is in reality uh, he always sort of seems supernatural right to the um, to the criminals and that's what he wants it's the fear he decides he can only ever work at night right and the cops know that he works between like the hours of 12 and 4 a.m. and they stake out for him and set traps for him but he's totally wise to that stuff um anyway i'm not going to spoil this i'm not going to do the whole ending because man this one is fully worth you seeking out um batman year one also uh maybe take a look for asteros polyp if you can find it um all right both these are great why did I choose this to review? Well, for one, I recently gave a really harsh and scathing review to Superman Year One by Frank Miller and John Romita Jr. It stunk, all right? I really didn't like it. It was everything that this book was not. The subtlety of the writing and the characterization and the artwork and the world and everything, um, it was night and day. And now, maybe that's okay. Maybe that's the idea that Superman are sort of night and day, if you will. Batman is, is night, rather. Superman is day. Okay, and you're going to do it in a different way. But man, the writing wasn't up to snuff. The art, the collaborator that you chose wasn't up to snuff. One thing that's really great uh, about the graphic novel is uh, it's got some of the uh, original pages, original artwork here in the back and original scripts by Miller including like handwritten annotations to the script it's it's really cool stuff to see the process of writing it just feels like it was way more um, thought out and and like doted over than the more recent Superman year one I'm sorry to say I'm gonna make an analogy here of Frank Miller old Frank Miller is Al Pacino circa Godfather one right cool restrained precise uh still still has an edge right you know there's menace there or whatever but like it's cool and then then we're talking now he's gone over the edge 
of uh, Al Pacino, like in his current like scene chewing hammy days where he's screaming in every scene and uh, maybe he'll redeem himself in the Irishman and maybe Frank Miller can redeem himself with some more comics going forward. Like I said, this is collaborative comics from Miller. I think it's worth looking at his comics in two different um, sets, like the stuff that he did collaboratively and the stuff that he did completely solo. There's not as much of that, but it's stuff like Sin City where you get to see Frank Miller as a pure artist, and that is a varying quality too. One of these days we'll bring in some Sin City and we'll take a look uh, at some of those books and talk about uh, what made some of them great, what made some of them not so great. Hey, speaking of great, what's great is uh, if you made it this far in this video uh, and are enjoying these videos, then uh, you're one of the diehards and I wanna thank you so much for subscribing and liking these videos and especially for leaving comments down in the comments section. Let me know what you think about Frank Miller and David Mazzucchelli and Batman Year One and hey, whatever else is on your mind that might be related. But most of all, and I mean this sincerely, thank you for watching. Thank <laughs> you.